Hello, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and I am sitting under about the most makeshift shade area in my community garden that you can imagine. It's it's a, a tarp with a bunch of bamboo poles ah, holding it up. <laughs> and a couple of stakes in the ground, but uh, I kind of put bamboo poles, not even tied down or really in the ground. I kind of put bamboo poles wherever strategically it would get it above my head. Uh, and uh, it's about 80 degrees outside about 82 right now it's gonna get close to 90 this afternoon and it's Memorial Day and uh, instead of barbecuing I am growing I'm planting up my the rest of my community garden or the vast majority so I rent a 25 by 30 community garden plot and uh, from the county so I am whew, so I made this makeshift thing so that I could get some work done um, during the midday instead of just in the evening and uh, I've got a ton of tomatoes to plant up. Yeah, so today is like the first unofficial day of summer, and I am about three weeks behind on getting my tomatoes planted up, so I need to get those in the ground today. I do look a little burned, and that's partly because we had a seedling sale yesterday. So I grew so many seedlings, I estimate probably close to 250 seedlings that I didn't use in my own garden this year. Um, and that's because I bought 300 popsicle sticks for labeling uh, containers and I had less than 50 left at the end and that's not even counting the ones that I had labels already for in the jugs. So yeah, I grew a lot this year. <laughs> Might have gone a little crazy. So we decided to have a little seedling sale and uh, I'll show you some photos and some images from that now. So here are the seedlings that I'm about to sell. I've given away probably about 50 seedlings so far, um, but my friend wanted to have a seedling sale and I said, oh yeah, let's do it. So here are the ones that I've potted up. The ones on the table are mostly tomatoes. Underneath is squash and zucchini, as well as flowers and peppers, uh, an eggplant. I also have uh, some herbs for sale. Here's a photo of us having some people come through. That's my sister on the left tucking her hair in. And then uh, my friend is named Viv. And uh, look here, she is holding tomatoes. She's so adorable. I just love her. Um, and I posted on Nextdoor, on some Facebook gardening groups, and my own personal page. And uh, then I, um, yeah, we probably had about two dozen people stop by. Uh, and, you know, I made about $100 out of it. Um, in the end, which is probably about offsetting the folding table I got, which I needed anyway, as well as other things. But it was a fun thing to do. Uh, and I got rid of some of my plants. Uh, and so I really enjoyed that. And I'm just really happy to, uh, to have this shade. <laughs> I'm going to show you an outside picture of it. It is so janky is the word I use. There's my makeshift shade bed, this <laughs> shade area. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Ignore the plants sitting there, but there's squash and zucchini that I've planted up in the beds so far. This first one is uh, watermelon sweet crimson. Then we have delicata squash. White eclipse, uh, or partial eclipse, I can't remember which squash. Crookneck yellow. I think I, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure that's a crookneck yellow I planted inside the hoop house as well to see if it's more protected from the pests. This is a white scallop squash. Okay, the other one was partial eclipse squash. This one's a white scallop. A Korean melon, which I've never grown before. Black Beauty zucchini. And pumpkin Connecticut field. And this is just some leftover zucchini. Connecticut field pumpkin. So, woohoo! And then my sister came and helped me and we weeded these two rows and we put some gardening soil, tree leaf compost, some um, chicken fertilizer and concentrates. So you just sprinkle it as well as slow release organic fertilizer and some worm casting. So I need to mix it in. And then this is where I'm gonna plant the tomatoes. You can see here where I've put in uh, three big stakes. We used a um, stake driver or whatever those things are called to put them in and uh, got that in yesterday. And what I plan to do is I plan to string uh, the plants up, the tomatoes up. And I need to put more poles for this bed, but I can do it after I've transplanted everything. 
here are my tomato plants. They're kind of all sitting on top of this cart. Okay, so here's an example of a tomato that I'm gonna plant deeper and sideways to get as much of the root system in here as I can. Because as I said before, tomatoes can grow roots along their stem. So when you're planting them in the garden for the first time, you can plant them as deep as you want. You just wanna make sure the first set of, uh, of leaves is above the soil line, preferably at least an inch or two. So what I've done is I've dug a hole that's much longer than I would normally dig for a tomato. And I haven't put in my, excuse the lack of gloves, I just had them on, but I took them off to get the camera on. All right, I'm gonna put in a little more than that of my organic slow release fertilizer. So here we have the tomato, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plant it like this. In fact, I think I will take off this branch. And then I'm gonna turn it near the top. So I'm going to plant it as far over to the edge as I can so that the top of the plant will be in the middle of the bed. In fact, I need to dig this a bit deeper. Where's my trowel? Ooh, there's something. This is the thing. Whenever you have a new garden, there's always... Oh, that's a chunk of concrete or asphalt. Look great. <laughs> well, I'm glad I dug that up. All right, so we've got it a little bit deeper here. But I've heard that even if you plant it so it's not facing perfectly up at the top, that it will still turn back to face the top. This is, by the way, the tomato art colors, cherry art colors. This is from a Baker Creek Seeds. Uh, so I don't know what color this is because they're all different colors. So who knows? I might have the yellow. I might have the red. I might have, I think, orange was the other one. So I'm going to plant it now that I have that deeper like that. So normally I water it before I put the plant in. Since I kind of need to see where all the plant is going, I'm adding water throughout that whole space because I just want to make sure the whole thing has plenty of water. So you see how I'm bending it like this? And the idea here, and I've already mixed some of the slow release fertilizer into the clay and compost and other stuff I put on here. Some of it. So look at that. All right, I'm going to take off even this row here. Just leave in the top one so it can grow more, enough to get sun and enough to get nutrients to continue to make roots and grow and expand. And look at that. Look how great that looks. And you wouldn't know that there's a whole stem there and down below looking at this, would you? But this tomato is going to have a much better root system, be a much stronger tomato, last winds and other things better and it'll do better in with less water i mean not that tomatoes don't need water but it'll do better with less water and there we have it isn't that great so it looks like you would never know if you just came to look at my bed you'd never know there's a whole bunch of tomato stuff going on under there <laughs> Whew. that was a lot of work guys partly because of the heat got up to about 90 today uh, I'm in zone uh, 7A, and uh, here it is. Here's the beds, all tomatoes. So I'll take you through them. But what I've done is I've spaced them about two feet, maybe a little more apart. Uh, I wanted to do three feet apart, but I also really wanted more tomatoes. So I may regret that. And uh, I have more to plant, but let me go through what I've actually planted here in this bed. All right, so we've got yellow stuffer tomato, beefsteak tomato, great white tomato. I've never grown a white tomato before. I'm so excited to see how they'll look. Pink love tomatoes. Then we have the Paul Robeson tomato, which I think is a, a purple tomato, purple and red. Black crim tomato. And then here on the end, I have uh, some marigold. So I tried to plant a marigold on one end of the bed. So I planted one on this end and I planted one on the other end of the bed. The first guy here is Brad's Atomic Grape Tomato. Then we have Pork Chop Tomato. Here's the Art Colors Cherry Tomato that you saw me plant earlier. Cherokee tomato. This is my absolute favorite. It's what I grew my first year. I've grown it. This is my third year now growing, uh, having gardening full born, full grown, full blast. <laughs> 
full-on gardening, my third year full-on gardening, and Cherokee tomatoes has been great for me every year. This is a Porco tomato. This is my old German tomato. Look how healthy this one is. I mean, that's gorgeous. And last but not least is a zebra tomato, and I will show you. You can see how the wet extends almost all the way to the marigold was. I planted the base of it there, and it came all the way over here. So that is going to have a lot of root system underneath it. Hey, look how dirty I am. <laughs> I have to say that this is my favorite time of the day in the garden, and I, and I understand why Jess from Roots and Refuge feels the same way. It's cool. I don't know if you can see them, but there's barn swallows flitting around eating the mosquitoes. There are mosquitoes. I have to wear some mosquito spray, but not near as bad as back home. Uh, and the scent of honeysuckle is coming off from the woods. Uh, I'll show you. I don't know if you can see the honeysuckle over there on the other side of the woods. It's not native to this area, but it sure does smell pretty when the breeze goes by it. I tell you what, when I rented this community garden pot, so I'm like 75% of the way planted now. I have to plant eggplants and I need to plant up some beans and some cucumbers and some other things. But the vast majority of the crops I want to grow in this garden are in the ground now. And to me, that is so exciting because I tell you, when I rented this plot, I wasn't sure. I knew I'd make it happen, but I wasn't sure how much I'd get done this year. I really wasn't sure how far I'd get. And uh, I'm just so, and also I'm very grateful my sister's visiting and um, she's helped a lot with the weeding and preparing the beds, we, you know, preparing the soil. So I definitely had help uh, with this. But either way, I am just so grateful to have gotten this far in this garden. Now there's a lot of stuff still to do going forward. As someone put in comments the other day, like said every gardener ever, there's still lots to do. But I feel like I can relax now in that I don't have to be panicked about getting more done. I feel pretty happy with how things are going right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please give the thumbs up if you did and uh, next week I'm going to check in on how my garden back gardens back at the house are doing. I've planted up flowers, the raspberries are starting to turn red uh, and all kinds of developments are happening uh, back at the house so I can't wait to show you next week on that. So stick around make sure you have the alert set so you get uh, a heads up when I post new content and uh, otherwise I'll see you next time.